Hello, it's Jay here again. Welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we are going to um, finish off the basic functions for our player one movement. And as I said in the previous lesson, we will revisit this script to add other features but this will get all the basics in place and then we can move on and do other things and then we'll come back to this at a later date but for now we're going to make some updates actually to the void update function and we're going to come here after the apply gravity line now it must go here before any other code. So let's come here and we'll say for open and close brackets will open and close again. Let's come inside this first set of brackets and we're going to say int a equals zero semicolon a less than player attack anim dot length semicolon a plus plus and we've done this before and we're just getting the length of the attack animation so let's put that into the comments creates an int for how many in fact, I'll weird it int for animations and gets the length based on how many animations we have. And I'll just fix that typo there. I think I should put the attack animation, so I'll just make that little change to the comment. Okay, let's come inside and we'll say if we'll open and close brackets. Inside the brackets, we're going to say get component. We'll open and close brackets. And what we want is animation. We'll come here and we'll open and close brackets again. And then in between these closed brackets, we're going to put is playing. Again, with the capital I. We'll open and close brackets again. We'll come inside. We're going to say play attack anim. Open and close the square type of brackets. Inside, we're going to put A. We'll come to this point and we'll say dot name. So let's put that into the comments. And it's quite simple. If an attack animation is playing, and again, we've done this before. We'll do nothing and return. So we'll just put our usual comment. And this is quite self explanatory. We're just saying that um, if an attack animation is playing, then we can't switch to another state until that animation has completed. In fact, let's scroll down. And let's have a look. Because I believe I've already got the get component in place for the animation. Here we go. Player one anim. And we'll come back to the void update. And let's just get that in place. We can get rid of those brackets. 
And this is because we already got it here. So, with that in place, let's have a look what else we need to do. So, let's come down here. And we'll create of type private void. And we'll give it a naming convention of horizontal input manager. Open and close brackets. We'll open and close again. We'll copy in a debug log. And we'll just swap out the naming convention. We'll come back up to the void update again. So we'll put this with the attack input manager here. Open and close brackets, close the line off. And in the comments, our usual one, call the name of the function, horizontal input manager, and then function. So let's save that off. And let's come down again. And let's get this in place for the horizontal input so we're going to say if open and close brackets inside the brackets import dot get axis will open and close brackets inside the brackets little speech marks vertical come in between the close brackets we're going to use a greater than sign and controller dead zone positive double and input dot get axis again open and close brackets horizontal in between the close brackets is greater than the controller dead zone negative. Let's just break that up for commenting. So we'll enter there. Into the comments, if vertical input is greater than controller dead zone, positive we'll come to the next line and I'll put this in capitals and horizontal input is greater than the dead zone negative and if that's the case let's just copy one of the player states lines let's paste that in and play one states equal to and we want the play did we call it the player jump forward we did so let's just copy that in here and here let's just copy all of that we'll paste it in below we'll change what needs to be changed and actually that just needs to be changed to a less than obviously we'll change the comment And we'll change it to player jump backwards. And that's the horizontal input set up. 
And now let's come to the player one idle. So we're calling the idle animation. We want an if statement, open and close brackets. Inside the brackets, we want player is grounded, open and close brackets again. Into the comments, we're going to say if player is grounded. Come below, we'll do nothing and return. So return, close the line off and our usual comment. If the player isn't grounded, we want to make the player fall to the ground. <coughs> Underscore player one move direction is going to be equal to a new vector three. Open and close brackets. Inside the brackets, we'll say zero comma, and we just need to move on the y axis. So we'll say player, and let's have a look at what we called it here so did we just use jump speed oh here we go players speed y axis so let's come back comma zero again and obviously close the line off so set the move direction defined by a vector three. And then we need to move the player. So we also need to say player one move direction is going to be equal to the player one transform dot transform direction will open and close brackets close that line off inside the brackets we're going to put the player one move direction let's just break this up for commenting so let's get this into the comments Players move direction equals players transform to transform direction by move direction which we've actually assigned here and let's come inside here we're going to say underscore collision flags is going to be equal to the players controller and there we go player controller dot move Open and close brackets, close that line off, inside the brackets, players, move direction, play one move direction. Times, time, dot, delta time. Let's put that into the comments. So collision flags equals move player controller by move direction. let's just save that off there for the moment let's come back to the void update now so 
let's have a look. We need to come here. So it needs to come after this four block, but before this block of code here. And we're going to say if open and close brackets, inside the brackets, we're going to put player is grounded again, open and close brackets, and we'll actually come to the end. We'll open and close brackets again. We'll cut all of that code. And we'll paste it in. Into the comments, we'll say if. And we'll put player is grounded. Then we can do all of this. And in fact, let's come back down. We'll create a new void. And we'll change horizontal to standard. Input manager, let's copy that into the debug log. Let's come back up to the void update. And we'll call that function. So standard input manager. And we'll just put to call that in the comments. And we'll cut all of that code. And yes, we could have put this code and this code in the same block. But I like to break things up. It's not going to make any sort of difference to the optimization. But uh, I do like to have my code in different blocks. I just think it makes it easier if case you ever have to debug code. In case any of you was wondering why I prefer to do it this way. So let's save that off. And that's our basic code in place. As I said, we will re revisit this script and we'll add things like special moves and other things you expect to see in fighting games and the abilities for combos and other such things. But um, this will give us basic movement and now we can actually continue on, create a few more functions and then we'll come back and we'll add features and really start to polish up the product. But I think we'll leave it here for this lesson. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time. And until then, as always, bye for now.